exciting, Masech Shabbos, and this will take us in Hashem through most of the summer. Uh, and Masech um, Shabbos, of course, is a Masech which is extremely, extremely practical and a to the Halacha Lamaisa, to know every single Shabbos what to do and so on. So Metz Hashem will have a lot of different things that uh, we'll learn in the Gemara, and I'll try to share as much as possible from the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, and again, Talach Lamaisa as well. So the Mishnah over here begins with the Malacha of Hitzah, Yitzias HaShabbos. The Malacha of carrying from one domain to another domain, which is carrying from the Shusayachet to the Shusarabim. That's the Isser. The, one of the 39 malachas of Shabbos that you may not carry from the Shusayacha to the Shusarabim or vice versa. So, one of the, before we get into the actual Mishnah itself, one of the questions that the Rishayim Taisvis right over here asks, and others as well, why does the Mishnah begin with this malacha? If you look in the Mishnah of the Lama Tes Malachas, you'll see this is the last of all the Lama Tes Malachas, is Yitzhiya Shabbos, is Haitzah Mirushos Lirushos. But here, Instead of what you would have expected, that the Tana should begin, these are the 39 Malachas of Shabbos. And then go through the list. And then go through the explanation of each one of the 39 Malachas, piece by piece. Which is what the Gemara actually does later, once it does quote the Lama Tes Malachas, somewhere in the Ayans, Ayin Gimel, or uh, in Ayin Gimel, there there's the Mishnah where it uh, brings the Malachas, and then it goes through in order, until the end of the Masechta, basically. So why does it start with Yitzhiya Shabbos? Without mentioning what the Malachas are, what Shabbos is about. You have a similar thing in many Masechtas and Shas. It starts somewhere in the middle of the story, and then like if someone says the story, then in the middle of the Masechta, it comes back. Now let's go back to the beginning. There's 39 Malachas, and this is what it's about. So what's the Pshat? So, Taisus over here gives a few answers. The first answer Taisus interestingly says is, this is the, the Derech of the Tana. He chooses something which has a lot of intricate details, it has a lot of pratim to it. That's th- what the Tana wants to teach first. There's a Rishos HaYochet, there's a Rishos HaRabim. There's actually four different domains, as we'll learn in the Gemara. Then there's different details. This is a complicated malacha. It seems to be just a very, very simplistic malacha. You carry from one domain to, uh, to another domain. But as we'll see, there's a lot of intricate details about this malacha. And the Tana started off with this to clarify all the details with this malacha. That's one answer. Another answer, Rabbi Tam says, that this is more of a dover ha Carrying all other malachas is something that a person separates on Shabbos. But not carrying from one Rishos to another is something which is very t- small, which is very, very common that it could happen. A person leaves something in his pocket, some person is carrying. It's more ha than the rest of the malachas. It's more common and therefore the Tana starts with this. And the third pshat that Rabbi Natam says over here is that it begins with this malacha because the malacha of ha is a malacha grua. It's different than the rest of the Malachas of Shabbos. All the Malachas of Shabbos, you're creating something. There's something that's happening that you could see through the Malacha that you're doing. You're building, you're, or the opposite of building is a Malacha. You're, you're all, starting from the Malacha of Zireya, you're planting, you're watering, you're, you're plowing. You're doing something, you're accomplishing something. Carrying the smallest item in your packet from one domain to another domain doesn't seem like a very creative kind of a piece of Malacha. And therefore, it's called a malacha grua. It's the expression of tesis here. And therefore, the Tana comes to clarify and begins. This is the beginning. Let me tell you, this is also to clarify to everybody that this is a malacha on Shabbos. Huh? Grua, inferior. It's an inferior malacha. Then, there's a pshat that the Rebbe brings in a sikh and chelik yur aleph, parshas b'shalach. And there, the Rebbe brings a medrish, gishmak medrish, that says that there was somebody that asked Rabbi Akiva the question, is it true that the Eivishta keeps Shabbos, like we keep Shabbos? You know, it says, Magid Vodav Le'yakiv, Chukov HaMishpat of Le'Yisrael, that the Eivishta keeps mitzvahs like we do. Does the Eivishta keep Shabbos as well? So if so, how does it rain on Shabbos? How does the grass grow on Shabbos? How does everything else in the world function on Shabbos, which seemingly is, is being over on the Malachas of Shabbos? So Rabbi Akiva answers him and says, I'll give you a marshal. Just like on Shabbos, when you put up an aid of, and then it makes the whole place a private domain. And you can carry within that aid of, so too the Ebesha can do all the malachas because the whole world is Ebesha's domain. It's all one Rishos for the Ebesha where he, where he exists. So you can do all the malachas on Shabbos. That's the response of Rabbi Kiva. So the Rebbe asks the question, what kind of a response is that? Putting up an aid of is not matter all the malachas. Putting up an aid of is only matter the malacha of carrying in that within the aid of. 
And even an Erev doesn't work, work by Mitzvah and Shusar Rabbim. We'll see in Mitzvah Shem we get to Mitzvah the Erevin. So what's the sinyan that uh, he's telling him that putting up an Erev is mat at all the 39 Malachis? So what do you see from this? That the Yisoyed of all the Malachis is the Haitzah, Mirishos Lirishos. The fact that there's an existence of one domain, a private domain, a Rishos HaYachid, and a Rishos HaRabim, and therefore there's, there's carrying from one domain to another, that's really the basis of all other Yisurim and Malachas of Shabbos. By the Eibishter, where there's no two domains, there's no union of Malacha of Shabbos Bechla. It's not Shaykh Bechla, the union of, of Malacha. What's the pshat? The whole idea of, of resting on Shabbos is to recognize that the Ebeshter is the creator of the world and everything is the Rishus of the Ebeshter and everything belongs to the Ebeshter. That is the whole concept of Shabbos. We're resting on Shabbos to recognize that and express that fact. So by us over here below, where we exist in a world that there's a hell and a Hester, the Ebeshter's presence is concealed and the world seems to be a domain outside of the Ebeshter's domain. So that is something that we have to have a Shabbos once a week to remind ourselves and not to do Malacha, to, to rest and bring and recognize the Abish's presence in this world. But by the Abishter, mitzad him, all the tzimtzumim and all the alamas vestedim are non-existent. Mitzad the Abishter's perspective, the whole world is Yechidah Shalaylam. It's all unity with the Abishter. So mitzad the the resting on Shabbos, is, does, does, not, does not exist. Mitzad the even while he's doing all the Malacha, it's all within Yechidah Shalaylam. Whatever exists is all within his domain. So therefore, by giving this marshal of Haitzah, that explains why the rest of the Malachas don't apply either. So the Masechte begins with this Malacha, because this is the basis of all the other Yisurim and all the other Malachas of Shabbos. Let's, let, let's begin, begin inside. Tzias HaShabbos. Carrying on Shabbos from one domain to another. Shtayim Shein Arba. So there are two types of uh, carrying. That will actually be uh, four bifnim for the one that's standing on the inside. And there are two types of carrying for the one that's standing on the outside, which will be branched off into four categories. What are they? Ketzad. How, how do we explain these? Uh, in the total, we have uh, actually eight different possibilities. You have a poor individual that's standing on the outside. is bifnim. And the house owner is standing on the inside. So the Mishnah begins with the Oni that's standing on the outside. Poshat Oni is Yodilifnim. The poor individual stretches out his hands inside into the house. So let's say he has a basket where he wants to get something from the house owner, that he should place something into his basket. So he stretches out his hands inside and he puts down the basket inside. And he places down the basket into the hands of the balabayas. Oi, or <coughs> the other cases, he took something, he took a piece of bread outside of the hands of the balabayas, and he took it out, and the ani takes it out, the takes it out, the ani is chayiv for the malach of Haitzah, in both of these cases, the balabayas potter. The balabayas is totally potter. What is the Mishnah teaching us here? So this is a very important fundamental rule regarding the Malach of Haitzah, which will be relevant for the next uh, 10 blad or so, that when it comes to the Malach of Haitzah, you're only chayiv if you have the two parts of the Malach, the beginning part and the ending part, which is the Akira. You withdrew it from the place where the item was sitting upon, on, and the Hanacha. You placed it back down uh, in a position in the new Rishos that you entered into. If the Malach of Haitzah is done, but it's, it's missing the beginning, which is the Akira part, or it's missing the ending part of the Malacha, which is the Hanacha, placing it down, that's a half a Malacha. You're not chayiv for that. It's also the Rabbanon, but there's no chayiv, uh, there's no Isim that I said. There has to be the Akira, the Haitzah, and the Hanacha. So the Malacha has three components in order for, it to be, for you to be chayiv menatayra. If it only has one component, then it's a Isim that Rabbanon. So over here, the Ani uprooted it, he withdrew it from the hands of the Balabais, he brought it out, and he, he's standing in one position, bringing it out in his hands, that is the Hanocha, or he picked up the basket that was outside, and he placed it down into the hands of the Balabais, so there's an Akira and a Hanocha, so he's Chayev. But the Balabais, the Mishnah says, is Potter. Now, the word Potter in this Mishnah is unusual. Why? The Gemara will discuss it, but let me just explain here, because it's relevant for the whole Masechta. But Derech Klal, in Masechta Shabbos, 
the, the meaning of potter is potter aval oser. Your potter menatere from a karm chatos if it's beshegig or from skila if it's bemezid, but it's still forbidden midrabanon. In this case, though, when the Mishnah says potter, Rashi Yavir brings it from the Gemara, potter means potter umutter legamri. The balabais did nothing. The balabais was standing there with his hands, and the Oni placed something into his hands, or the balabais was standing with a piece of bread in his hands, and the Oni went and took the piece of bread out of his hands. The balabais didn't do anything, he didn't move his hands, he took the piece of bread out of his hands and took it out into the Rishasarabim. So because the balabais did nothing, so therefore it's completely mutter as far as the balabais is concerned. That's the type of potter here in this Mishnah. There may be an issue of lifni ivr le sitna michshal though. The balabais is standing there with open hands. He's, he's being, possibly, there's an issue, issue of uh, lifni ivr le sitna michshal. He's uh, causing a person that's blind to stumble in a mitzvah, in an aveda in this case. The places we'll discuss it in Dav Gimel, we'll discuss it in Mitzvah tomorrow. But in the, as far as Shabbos is concerned, potter over here means that it's totally mutter. Zak to Mishnah Vaiter. Pashat. So these were the two cases as far as the Oni. The Oni is doing the full malacha. Now we have the two cases where the Balabais is the one that's doing a full malacha. Pashat Balabais is Yodil Achot. The Balabais stretches his hands out to share with the Oni, to give something to the Oni. He's giving him a piece of bread. And he places it down into the hands of the Oni. So he did an Akira, he did a Hanacha, he did a full malacha. Oi shenotal, stop plats sitzen. Oi shenotal mitoicha, or the balabayis stretched out his hands and he took from the hands of the oni and he pr- he br- brought it inside into the rishus hayachid vehichnis. In both of these cases, balabayis chayiv. The balabayis is chayiv. He did a full melacha with an akira and a hanacha. The oni potter. The oni that did nothing is potter and mutter as well. So we have two cases for the one standing on the outside, two cases for the one standing on the inside. The Mishnah continues, what are the other two cases? The Mishnah said, Shtayim Shein Arba. So the other two cases for the Oni outside and the Oni inside will be <coughs> when you're doing a half a Malacha. Poshat Oni Es Lifnim. What happens when the Oni stretches out his hands to the inside? So the Oni, for example, is stretching out his hand inside and he's holding a basket in his hands, but instead of placing it down into the hands of the Balabayis, the Balabayis takes it from his hand. So the Oni never placed it down. He never did the Hanocha. The Balabayis took it from him. Or another case. Shenosan Litoicha Vahoitzi. Or the Oni. Shenosan Latoicha, the Balabayis, puts something into the hands of the Oni. Right? The Oni stretches his hands inside, and the Balabayis puts something into the hands of the Oni. And the Oni's hands are still inside, so the Balabayis only did a half from Malachi. He, he uprooted, he withdrew the p- piece of bread from where it was, placed it down into the hands of the Oni. Now the Oni takes out the, his hands with the piece of bread inside. He did only a half from Malachi, the Oni. The Hoitzi, and he took it out. Shneem Peturin. In this case, both of them are potter. Because each one of them only did a half a malacha. In one case, the Oni did uh, a hakira on the outside. In the other case, the Balabais did a hakira on the inside. And in one case, the uh, Oni did the hanocha. And in the other case, the Balabais did the hanocha. So each one did a half a malacha. They're both potter. But because it's a half a malacha, so therefore each one of them, what they did, is a isra mid rabbonon. Huh? This is whatever the Ainish is for isra rabbonon. Yeah, makas mar, this is usually the Ainish, correct. So this is all benigeya to the Oni on the outside. Whether the Oni stretched his hand in and the Balabais took it out of his hand, or the Oni stretched his hand in and the Balabais placed something into the Oni's hand and the Oni took it out. Now, part, no, that, those are the two cases where the focusing on the Oni on the outside. There's another two cases focusing on the Balabais on the inside. Poshat Balabais es yodil The Balabais stretches out his hands to give bread to the poor person on the outside. And instead of placing it down into the hands of the Yoni, the Oni Metoicha. The Oni took out the piece of bread from the Balabais' hands. The Balabais never placed it down. He never completed the Malacha. Oi, Shenosan Letoicha of Hichnis. Or the Balabais stretches out his hands and the Oni places something into the Balabais' hands. He places a basket into the Balabais' hands. So the Oni did the Akira. The Balabais did not do the Akira. The Oni up, uh, uprooted the 
basket and placed it into the Balabai's hands. Vehichnis, and the Balabai's brought the basket in, and now he did the Hanukkah, the Balabai's did the Hanukkah, Shnei and Peturin. Again, they're both Pater, because each one of them did a half a Malacha. So before we go to the Gemara, <coughs> let me just mention two interesting and important details that the Mepharshim speak about in this Mishnah. One is, Benigeya, to this concept of Akira and Hanocha, that the full Malacha has to be the three parts, the Akira, the Hitza, and the Hanocha. So the question that's asked by many Mepharshim is, don't we know the Klal, that Chatzishir is Asim and if you do a half, if you eat a half a kezayis of any yisr, it's asim and So why don't we apply the same rule over here, when you get to this case, when you do a half a malacha, that it should be asim and Why is it only asim and mm. So there are various answers. The Rebbe Nasiche and Chelik Yudal at Parshas Voschanon brings what the Mepharshim say, that over here it's not chatzi shir, it's a chatzi malacha. There's a distinction between a chatzi shir and a chatzi malacha. Chatzi shir is when you have the full act of the yisr, for example, you're eating something. Elamai, you're missing the amount necessary for the Isser. You're missing the full amount of the Kezayis. But the act of eating is a full act of eating. Mashenken over here, it's not just a Chatzi Shir. It's a Chatzi Malacha. It's an incomplete Malacha. When you are carrying out and you never placed it down, you never established it and will Kiveya a new place for this item. It's there in this new Rishos, sort of in a temporary kind of an existence. It's there, not yet placed down. You can bring your hand right back in. If the Balabais remembers that what he did is, is a mistake and he brings his hand right back in, so he never completed the malacha. So it's a half a malacha. You don't really have this when it comes to eating. I'm sorry, you don't really, you can, really, chew, I mean, huh? chew, you can chew and spit out. Yeah. Okay, so, there was, so when it comes to eating, if the, if the isr is the hanos mayov, so that's the eating. If the isr is hanos groyne, so then, so it's, it's either or, either you ate or you didn't eat. Over there it's just about the amount, the size of food. Over here you have an interesting thing. You can divide the malacha into half. A half of malacha is nishkin malacha. So therefore it's not chatzi shir, and therefore it's only asim awesome rabbanon. And the only is it is, because you may come to do a malacha, you may confuse it with a malacha, like many yisurim, that chachamim were masakin, that you shouldn't come to do a malacha. That's one point in the Mishnah. Another point is, interesting that uh, the Mepharshim here, the Mepharshim and Mishnah bring up, why does the Mishnah use the Lashen of a Balabayas and an Oni? Why not just use the term of the man on the outside and the man on the inside, without giving them any titles of Balabayas and Oni? If the Mishnah gives them titles of Balabayas and Oni, it's pretty clear that we're talking about a case where the Oni is hungry, he's poor, he needs food, and the Balabayas is feeding him. That's what it seems like we're talking about here. If so, this is really a case of Tztake. It's a case of tzedakah, there's a Gemara that says regarding a tov, a dvar mitzvah, that if a person, let's say it's, it's Yom Tev, Sukkis, Shechaliyas, B'Shabes, and a per- you're not supposed to take a lulav on, on Sukkis because you might come to carry. What if a person carries out his lulav on Sukkis for the purpose of the mitzvah, he forgot that it's Shabbos and he's walking in the street with his lulav and he did an akira and an anoche, he did a malacha, but if it's for the purpose of a mitzvah, the alacha is tov, a dvar mitzvah, pater. If he was carrying and he was doing it for the purpose of a mitzvah, although it's, it's usr, but it's still because he was doing it for a mitzvah, he's potter. So why don't we apply the same rule over here when we have the Ani and the Balabayas? You have a mitzvah tzedakah here. That's what the Mishnah used these terms, that's what it seems. So therefore the Mepharshim say that the Mishnah is taki saying an additional chiddush. The Mishnah is saying, although this is a Ani, and it's a Balabayas, it's a mitzvah tzedakah, but still the chiyuv of Shabbos applies. And there's various reasons that are given for this. One of the reasons that's given for this is, Anachanami, it's a mitzvah of tzedakah, but the mitzvah of tzedakah in this case could be done without the iser. The mitzvah of tzedakah could be done by giving him the tzedakah, by inviting him into your house. Why, why is the honey standing on the outside and you're giving him the food on the outside? You can do it without doing the iser. So because the mitzvah could be done without the isra, so therefore this tar bedvar mitzvah is not included in the cloud that you're going to be potter if you would tell you bedvar mitzvah. That's an additional chiddush of the mitzvah. Yeah. Ah? He, was, he was giving him a basket to fill it up with, uh, with bread. That's what happened. Yeah. Okay, let's carry on to the Gemara. Tanan Hosam, there's a Mishnah in the beginning of Masech the Shvuas. Shvuas, Shtaim, Shein Arba. When it comes to the Isra of making a Shvua, when a person says a Shvua, which is an oath that was false. Okay, now so it is Shtaim Shein Arba. There's two types of Shvuas 
that branch out into four. What are those two that branch out into four? So Rashi here says, in the Pasuk it says, Lahara ilahaitiv, which means a person can say future tense, there's two that in future tense and two in past tense. In future tense, the person says, I will eat. And then he doesn't keep the shvuah that he made. Or he says, I won't eat, I'll abstain from eating, and he doesn't keep his shvuah. That's in future tense. And then there's a ribui that you learn out from the Pasik that you could also, the shvuah also applies for the past. When a person says, I did eat yesterday, and he didn't, or he says, I did not eat yesterday, and he did, that's also part of the isr of a person making a false, taking a, saying a false oath. That's the shvuah's shtayim shahin arba. Vaita the Mishnah says, Yidiyas atoma. Shtayim Shein Arba. A person being aware of the fact that he's Tomei. There's also two cases that branch, out into, that branch out into four. What is this talking about? This is a person that was aware that he's Tomei. This is a unique din, Benigayat to Tuma, that the person entered into the Beis Mikdash while he was Tomei. And while he entered into the Beis Mikdash, he forgot about the Tuma. It was a helm, he forgot. Or another example, a person that ate Kochim. He ate from, from Kotchem and he forgot that he was Tomei. So those are the two scenarios that the Mishnah, that's the Shtayim. Whether entering into the base of Mikdash or eating Kotchem and he forgot. Why does the Mishnah use the term Yidiyais? So Rashi explains because when you to any other Shegeg, the Halacha is if you're a Shegeg, if you forgot and you did the Iser, if you forgot, you, even if you never knew actually, even if you never knew of the Iser, it's also a Shegeg and you have to bring a Karm Chatos. By Tomeh, there's a Gzaydas HaKastav, the only time you have to bring the carbon is if there was awareness, you knew you were Tomeh, you knew this is a base of Mikdash, you knew this is Kachim, you knew of the Iser, then you forgot, and you did the Iser, and then you remind yourself and you realize what you did wrong. That's when you have to bring the carbon. That's to be, be a Yidiyah Batchila, and a Yidiyah Basayf, and a Helam Ben Tayim, and you forgot in between. That's the Loshan of Yidiyah Satoma. So the two cases are, that the person forgot <coughs> about his Tumah, whether entering into the Beis HaMikdash or whether eating, eating Kachim. The other two cases is that the person is aware of his Tumah, but he didn't realize where he's walking. He was, he was going oblivious and he enters into the Azara, into the Beis HaMikdash, and he didn't realize that he entered into the Azara. He forgot about the place that he's in. Or a person is eating and there's food on the table and he's oblivious to the fact that there's also Kachim. And he ends up eating Kachim, not being aware that what he's eating is Kachim. So that's, he either forgot the Tumah, or he forgot the place or food that he's eating. <coughs> then the Mishnah says, Maris Nagoim Shnaim Shein Arba. There's also two colors for the white, uh, the whiteness of the Nega, which are two that branch out into four. There's the Se'es, the Baheres, and the Se'es. The Baheres is white like snow, the Se'es is white like uh, the... The Tzemer, the wool on the sheep, and then you have the Tildes that come out of that, which is uh, white like uh, uh, the, the plaster, like Sid, or white like the, uh, the inner shell of the egg. Four different colors, four different shades of white, the Negeya to the Negeyim. And then the Mishnah concludes, Yitzhiya Sashabe Shtayin Shein Arba. When it comes to carrying from one domain to another, on Shabbos, the Issa Malacha of Yitzhiya, there's also two that branch out into four. So now the Gemara's question is, my shnoche the tani shtaim shein arba befnim and shtaim shein arba bachot. Why over here does the Mishnah say that there's two that go and that branch into four, both for the person standing on the inside and for the person standing on the outside? Umay shnochosam. And why is it over there? The tani shtaim shein arba. That there it only says shtaim shein arba vesulai, and it doesn't say more than this. It doesn't say more than shtaim shein arba. Why didn't it say shtaim shein arba befnim? And Shtayim Shein Arba Bechutz. So before we see the Gemara's answer, let me just mention that Teisvis addresses here, on, on, on Ahmed Aleph already in the Mishnah, that Be'emes, the Pele is on our Mishnah. Why is the Mishnah getting into this entire Arichis of the Ani outside and the Ani on the, and the person on the inside, the Molochah from the inside, the Molochah from the outside? What's this big Arichis in the Mishnah? Isn't, it, isn't the point of all these cases basically the same? You're not allowed to carry from one domain to another. And then there's basically two concepts. There's when you do an Akira and a Hanokha. And then when you, when you do an Akira without a Hanokha or a Hanokha without an Akira. <clears throat> Why is the mission going through this whole Arichis, which basically is including, as we'll see in a moment in the Gemara here, there's the Hoitzah, there's the Hachnosa, there's the Molochah in the two directions, from outside to inside, from inside to outside. What's this Arichis? So Teisra says... It's a big Taisus here, it's a famous Taisus. And the point he makes is, going back to what I mentioned earlier, Malacha of Hitzah is a Malacha Grua. 
It's an inferior malacha. It's different than all the other malachas where you're creating something. There's something you're doing with, you could see what you're accomplishing. Here a person carries a little needle that's in his pocket, walking from the Shusayacha to the Rishusarabim. You over on the Isra of Malacha of Haitza. What, what did the person accomplish? So Taisa says, if you carried, the other Rishayim actually mentioned this detail, Taisa doesn't say this with Fadish, but if you carry a heavy table, a heavy item, and you move it from one room to another within the Rishus HaYachid, and you worked very hard, you were sweating, and you moved something around, there's no Malacha, you're not over anything. You carry a little needle from Rishus HaYachid to Rishus HaRabim, here there's a Malacha. So therefore the whole Malacha of Eitzha is a, is a Chiddush Dike kind of Malacha. And therefore, by the Malacha of Eitzah, unlike any other Malacha, there are two Psukim in the Teireh that is the source of the Malacha of, of Eitzah. When you get to all Malachas of Shabbos, there's no Psukim in the Teireh besides Eitzah and Eish, the Havara. All the other Malachas are learned out from the Malachas of Mishkan. The 39 Malachas that were done to build the Mishkan, those are the 39 Malachas that are on Shabbos. Besides Havara, which the Gemara explains why the Teireh has to write explicitly, and the Malach of Eitzah, there's not only one source, there are two psukim, there are two different sources for the Malach of Eitzah, because, because it's such a chiddish, if I would tell you it's us to do it in one direction, I would say maybe it's a gzayda sakasav. The whole Malach make, makes no sense that it should be a Malach, I would say maybe it's a gzayda sakasav. So the Taita says no, and it's us in the other direction as well. And it's us in this way and that way, the whole thing is a chiddish. That's what Taisus explains. That's why the Mishnah was so mighty. So our, the Gemara's question over here is, what's the, with the Mishnah in Shavuos? Why was it Mekatzer? And for the Gemara, <coughs> Hasam, there in Shavuos, the Lavik, or Shabbosu, it's not the main Masechta where it discusses Shabbos. So Ovis Tani, it only mentions the Ovis, Teldis Light Tani. The Teldis it doesn't mention. As we know, all of the Malachas of Shabbos have Ovis and Teldis. There are the 39 basic sources, which are called Ovis, of the Malachis, and then there are branches, Tildis, that come out of them. We'll see in the Gemara, when you get to uh, Shabbos, that's the, what the branches that come out from the Malach of, uh, of uh, Hitzah is. But for example, when you get to planting, there's planting, and then there's watering the grass. Watering the grass, you didn't plant directly, but that's a Tild of Zriya, Zireya, and so on. There's Ovis and Tildis. So over here, there's Ovis and Tildis. So right now, what is the Gemara referring to when it says Avis and Teldis? Hoitzah, carrying from the Shusayacha to the Rishusarabim, that's the original Malacha that it says in the Postic, that's the Av. What's the Teldah? The opposite direction. Hachnasa, bringing from the Rishusarabim into the Rishusayachit. So therefore, over here, it's Ikr Shabbos, it says the Avis and the Teldis. Hosom, the Lav Ikr Shabbosu. Over there in Shavuos, where it's not the main Masechta of Shabbos, of his Tani, the Teldis Light Tani. It only mentions Hitzah, and it does not mention Hachnasa. So the Gemara explains, of his my Neo, so now, what are, what are we saying here? What is the Av Yitzis? Only going out. Yitzis, if so, Yitzis, Tre Havyen. Yitzis, there's only two cases. There's the Balabais being Moitzi, and there's the Ani being Moitzi. That's it. Those are the only two cases of Yitzhiyas that we have where the Balabais does the full Malacha and the Ani does the full Malacha to be Maitzi, to do the Akira and the Hanacha. So there's only two. So how can we say that the Mishnah in Shavuos is only talking about Yitzhiyas if there's only two? Now, the Mishnah there is saying the Yitzhiyas. It's only talking about Yitzhiyas, but it's talking about two where the full Malacha was done, whether by the Ani or by the Balabais. And Mehen Liptor, and two of them, that half a Malacha was done. Either by the Balabais or by the Oni, taking it out. Only the Akira was done, only the Hitzah was done. So we do have two that branch out into four. But the Gemara says you can't say that. You can't say that over there in Mesech Shvuas, it's saying in a case, or cases, that are potter. The cases of Shabbos that it mentions there is similar to the Maris Negoyim, Mahas and Kulu Lechiyuva, just like regarding the, the, the shades of the Negoyim. They're all shades that are going to be Tomei, they're all Chayev, they're all Tomei, Afachanami Kulu Lechiyuva. That Mishnah is only mentioning things that are Chayev. It's not mentioning things that are Midrabanon. So if you're telling me that over there it's only talking about Hoitzah, you'll only be left with two. The Ani doing the full Malacha, and the Balabai is doing the full Malacha. There's only two. Where is there four? four? 
So therefore the Gemara gives a different answer. El Omer of Pope, Hocha, the Iker Shabbosu, over here, where it's the main discussion of Shabbos, Tani Chiyuvi Upturi, the Tan of our Mishnah mentions all the cases that include the cases that Yechayv Minatayre and the cases that Yopater Minatayre. Hosam, the Lavik Shabbosu, over there, it's not the main Masechta of Shabbos, Chiyuvi Tani, Pturi Laitani. It only mentions those cases that Yechayv and it does not mention the cases that Yopater. Okay, so over there it does mention Hitzah and Achnos, both. And it mentions the Hitzah that could happen through the Oni and the Balabais, it's two. And the Achnos that could be done through the uh, uh, Balabais and the Oni, which is another two. That's the Shtayim Shein Arba over there. <coughs> so the Gemara says right there, Chiyuvi Mainiu. So what are the Chiyuvim? Yitzias. The Lashon of the Mishnah there is Yitzias. What does the word Yitzias mean? Yitzias sounds like we're going out. We're going from the Rishos HaYachet to the Rishos HaRabim, to be Maitzi. It would sound like it does not include Achnose, to, to bring it in. Yitzi is Tati Havim. We're back to our question. If it's only saying the things that Yechayev on, and it uses the term Yitzi so that's only two. Shtayim da so the Gemara answer is no. Shtayim da Yitzha, v'shtayim da Achnose. There's two of Yitzha and two of Achnose. So that's the four. Frek the Gemara, but v'ha Yitzi is Ketani. The term used in the Mishnah is Yitzias, which means only going out, not coming in. And for the Gemara, Amaravashi, Tane Hachnosa Nami Yitzah Karila. The Tane refers to Hachnosa also with the expression of Yitzah for the simple reason the idea over here is that you're taking it out of the domain that it's in. Whether you're going into the Rishus HaYachar or out into the Rishus HaRabim, but the point remains the same that you're, being, you're transferring, you're being Maitzi from the place where it originated from. So therefore the Tana refers to it with the expression of Eitzah. That's Ravashi's answer. Mimai, and he says, I'll bring you a right to this. It says in the Mishnah, A person that moves an item from one domain to another, he's Chayef. That's, this is the Mishnah where it says, the Lama Tes Malachis. Mi lo yaskinon. Isn't that Mishnah also including as well, the Kama Ayel Merishos Arab Merishos Ayachet? When he brings in from Rishos Arab to Rishos Ayachet. Taisus explains, it doesn't say in that Mishnah, Hamaitzi Merishos Ayachet Lerishos Arab. It says, Hamaitzi Merishos Lerishos. Without specifying which Rishos we're speaking about. So it's, it, it, it includes whether going from Rishos Ayachet to Rishos Arab and also going from Rishos Arab to Rishos Ayachet. And still the Tanah refers to it with the term Hoytzah. The time am I? Why is whether you're going in, whether you're going out, referred to with the same expression of Hoytzah? Call Akira's Chayfetz Memekaymai Tanah Hoytzah Karila. Anytime you're withdrawing an item from its original position, to, from where it originated from, and you're bringing it to another domain, that's called Hoytzah. You remove the item from where it was. So therefore, whether you're going in, whether you're going out, that's included in Yitzias. This is Rav Ashi's answer. Rav Papa says, not Rav Papa, I'm sorry, Rav Vine. Um, Rav Vine, um, before we get to, to, to Rav's answer, Rav, it's Rav, sorry, before we get to that, Oma Rav, Masnisen Nami Deke. You could see right over here in our Mishnah. Oma Rav Nami yeah. No, what did I, what did I skip? Didn't I say Amar that? Avina, yeah. Amar Avina, na mideke, the Mishnah is also a raya to this fact that the lotion of Hitza includes Achnasa. Because the Ktani Yitzis, the Mishnah begins with the term Yitzis, the Kamafarish Achnasa Lalta. And immediately, what's the first case? It talks about the Oni that places something in the hands of the Balabais, which is going in. So therefore we see that the Achnasa is included in Hitzah as well. Shmamino, so this is a clear ayah that the term Yitzis includes in either direction you're going in. Rava Ma Rava says a different shot. Rishuya is katani. When the Mishnah says Hitzah, the word Hitzah means moving it from one domain to another. Even though it uses the term Yitzis, but it doesn't mean the direction of going out. It means the removal of a domain. Rishuya is. Rishuyah Shabbat Shtayim Shein Arba. The Rishuyah is changing the position of the item in one Rishus and another Rishus, that's Shtayim Shein Arba. So therefore it includes both going in and going out, because either way that's the point of the Malacha that you're changing its domain. It's a very similar answer to what, um, who was it over here, Rav Ashi said before. Rav Ashi is focusing on the Akira of the Chayfetz, the fact that you withdraw the Chayfetz from where it originated on, that's the Hitzah. 
it's interesting. It would seem like they're they're arguing on what's the the main gather of the malacha. What's the defining factor of the malacha? Ravashi is focusing on the akira, the very fact that a chayfitz was settled down in a position, and you uprooted it from that settled position. That's the main Indian of the malacha, and therefore the the name hoitza really goes on the akira. The akira is the main malacha. The hanacha is almost just sort of completing the akira, but the main thing is the akira. Mashenke in uh, Ravine, or uh, who is it here, Rove, is focusing on the change of domain. That point where you transfer, that change of one domain to another, that's the main uh, definition of the Malacha. And therefore he's focusing on the Shuyais. Let me just finish off with one word from the Ramban on this Gemara. When we learned in the beginning of this Ahmed, the Gemara said pretty clearly that uh, the Malacha of Haitzah, taking it out from Shusayach to the Shusarabim is the Av, and then the Hachnasa is a Tailda. And the reason is because in the Chumash, the, the Psukim, Rashi quotes it in the beginning, and places quotes, it says, Al Yaitse Yishmim Kaimayan. Al Yaitse, in the, in the Posik, it says Haitza, it doesn't say Achnasa. So therefore, Achnasa is a Tailda. But the Ramban says, once the Gemara has Charata from that Teretz, and it says a different Teretz, the Gemara is having Charata from the whole idea that Achnasa is considered to be a Tailda. Because here, what the Gemara is saying is, Achnasa and Haitza are Hainu Hach, they're the same thing. Going this direction or that direction, it's not a tilde. It's the same exact thing, just going in the opposite direction. Every tilde is a bit less than the original av. It's accomplishing what the av accomplishes, but the act is not the same as the av itself. When it comes to hitza and achnasa, they're the same exact thing. They're both an av. It's just going in the opposite direction. So the Gemara has charata from that havamina. That's the Ramban's opinion, at least, on this again. Is there a difference in the tilde, the chiyu, the aimshim? No. As far as the Einish of Chattos and Skila, an Av and a Tailda, both Asim and a Tailda, there's no Nafkimina. The only Nafkimina, as far as an Av and a Tailda is concerned, is going to get to whether you're going to be Chayv on one carbon or two carbonis. If a person does two separate Malachas on Shabbos, you have to bring two different carbonis. If it's a Shigigas Malacha, we'll learn about this later. You have to bring two separate carbonis. Right, to be Mechalik, Lechalik Yotzis, correct. Mashankin, if you do an Av and a Tailda, because it's a Tailda of the same Av, you have one Karmachatis. One kar That's only enough coming up here. Yeah.